Good morning, afternoon, evening. Isn't that what they say in the Truman Show? I shouldn't start videos like that because I don't know what time you're watching this. Cheech here with Fly Fish Food. And I have a cool product. I haven't been this excited about a hook for a long time. It's not new. It's relatively newer to us anyway. But it's the Tiemco 708. 40 degree keel jig variable shank 2x heavy wide gape forged bronze. It should just cross all that stuff out and say the ultimate stonefly hook. So as you can see, uh, we've been tying on the Daiichi 1730 quite a bit. It's got a bent shank. This thing, whatever they did to this point, it's just stupid sharp. And that bend on the end of it is, is uh, you know really makes for a good keeled nymph design so we're gonna tie up a stone like a soft hackle stone we're gonna use Lance's beloved stonefly chenille but we're gonna use seal brown and coffee on it and then also this super cool wild type brown 4b hen saddle these are like 15 bucks um, I went to whiting and hand selected all of these um, just so that we would get the good speckling on them. They range from kind of a, a reddish brown to a dark brown. So I'll show you how we tie that in as well. First things first, let's set this bead. So I've got a four mil slotted bead in this and I'm also going to add more weight because I'm a savage to this with O2O 2 lead wire. Oh, nine or ten wraps somewhere around there and this the slotted bead is going to want to kind of turn weird because the eye is turned flat and usually jig hooks the eyes turned the other way so you just kind of have to mash it in there until you get it to do what you want so just use your favorite thread you can use even a kind of a burnt orange or a, a hot spot colored thread for this i'm just using black so just brown silly legs or just whatever silly leg color you want for this one. And I'm going to tie in one piece. And I'm going to try to keep it on the far side of the hook shank. I'm going to wrap it down the bend a little bit. That kind of gives us a little bit more bend in the, the actual fly, a little bit more movement. Then I'm going to pull this other piece down and wrap it on the other side of the hook shank. So at the end of the day, I've got two appendages coming off the back, and I'll trim that a little bit. So just like that. From here, I'm going to take this stonefly chenille, strip a little bit off of it, and tie in that little core piece right here. And then if I were using thicker thread, it would take me a lot less time to build up the taper right here. I just want to build up the taper over this lead, which kind of makes everything tie in a little bit easier and better. So once I get here, I'm going to use a rotary style. and wrap that up just barely over the lead so I've got about that much showing. I'll tie that off. And we're trimmed. Okay, now comes kind of an interesting tie-in style for this soft hackle. Um, it's, it's super durable and uh, looks really cool too. So let me prep a feather. I'm just going to kind of pull some of the fibers down here and trim that off. And instead of tying that in right here, um, you know, and, and wrapping it forward, I'm actually going to tie this in right up by the bead. And if you leave a little bit longer stem on this, it's a little bit easier to do. So 
I've got the feather coming out the front of the fly and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave my thread up here I'm going to take some just straight brown ice dub um, good buddy of ours Mickey Anderson kind of turned me on to this color and it's got a lot of really cool UV properties um, caught a lot of fish on this color so from here I'm just going to kind of wrap a buggy messy thorax down to where the chenille meets now I'm going to take this soft hackle and I'm not even going to fold it or anything might kind of tease it into place with my hands and I forgot my hackle pliers so bear with me so I'm going to do one full turn and then I'm going to spiral it back just like with one more turn there so we've got kind of a full thorax now I'm going to catch that with my thread and wiggle my thread through this hackle up to the bead and I should be able to take this and just pull it and break it off so it's a really durable tie-in so as you can see I've got a hackle all throughout this fly I'm going to kind of preen it back a little bit and build up a little bit of a thread head just because I'm going to add some more rubber legs so I'm going to take the remaining piece of this span flex and I'm just going to tie one piece on the far side of the hook I'm going to fold it over and do the same on the other side I'm going to pull all those back and whip finish it now oh bad tool noise Ow. sorry should bleep those out with F words instead because people want to hear that instead. Okay, so now I'm going to push all those rubber legs forward and trim them all at the same time. And you can make those as buggy or non buggy as you want. So, anyway, that's essentially the fly. Those legs will kind of suck down closer to the body when you fish it. Um, you can do it a little sparser than that if you want, but. Um, the hackle fibers really move well and look at me I'm putting head cement on it but anyway there's a soft hackle jig stone super easy to tie and it is money